G'day folks, welcome to my channel. In this video, I wanna play you a news clip that was broadcasted on national TV by Channel 7, which is one of the major news networks here in Australia. Now this story was actually aired across all of the major news networks in Australia, and it's only recent, so these are fresh allegations against Hillsong. And in this story, a federal member of parliament tabled in thousands of financial documents from Hillsong that were leaked to him by a Hillsong employee. And in this video, he details some of the things that Brian Houston and his family and those that are closely associated with him were allegedly buying with the church money. They were spending millions of dollars according to these allegations. I want to play you this clip. Then afterwards, I want to discuss this whole issue of money in the church and whether or not pastors should be getting paid a wage at all. And if so, how much should they be getting. Let's get right into it. Here's the clip from Channel 7. With a trolley load of files, Andrew Wilkie prepares to unleash an unholy assault on a Pentecostal powerhouse. The member for Clark. Under the protection of parliamentary privilege, the independent MP detailed financial crimes allegedly committed by Hillsong. Relating to fraud, money laundering and tax evasion. Laws broken, he says, in Australia and overseas. Allegedly laid out in thousands of financial documents from a whistleblower. These documents show former leader Brian Houston treating private jets like Ubers. Revealing how in one three-month period, Mr Houston's trips cost $170,000. And in 2021, four members of the Houston family spent $150,000 of church money on a luxury holiday in Mexico. Hillsong followers believe that the money they put in the poor, a poor box, goes to the poor. But these documents show how that money is actually used to do the kind of shopping that would embarrass a Kardashian. Listing purchases including $6,500 for a Cartier watch for Brian Houston's wife, Bobby, $2,500 for Louis Vuitton luggage, shopping sprees for designer clothes at Saks Fifth Avenue in New York, and $16,000 for custom skateboards. Mr Wilkie says the documents also show donations paid for more than a million dollars a year in royalties to Hillsong musicians like Joel Houston, Brian's son. The documents also revealing Hillsong earns $80 million more in Australian annual income than it reports publicly. The MP says the files, which he's verified, were offered to the Tax Office and the Securities and Investments Commission last year, but not acted on, labelling that a failure of regulatory oversight. Hillsong says the claims are out of context and in many respects wrong, saying it's under new leadership and is a different church now than it was a year ago. Rob Scott, 7 News. All of that is absolutely disgraceful. These people are bringing shame and reproach upon the name of Christ. The unbelieving world is looking at the church and the church leadership and saying to themselves, these people just want my money. And in many cases, what they're saying is true. Many of these pastors just want their money. It's a sad thing to say, but it's true. Every single week, they have to give a tithe and offering talk and they have to convince people to give and they have to take in millions of dollars. And it's really disgraceful. I mean, really, instead of doing tithe and offering talks, they should be doing gospel talks every single week. And they should be looking at different ways to present the gospel to people every single week week. That's what they should be doing and they should stop talking about money. For many people, the moment you walk in, it's very obvious that these people want their money. And I want to talk about this whole thing. And remember, the people in the pews, they're not, they're not innocent in this. They share in the guilt. They share in the shame because they are blindly giving to their local churches and they're not looking at what the money is being spent on. They're blindly giving and the Bible says that we as Christians ought to be wise stewards of our money. But I want to talk about this whole subject of, of pastors and money and whether or not pastors should be getting a wage and if so, how much should they be getting? And the first thing that I want to point out is that one of the qualifications of an elder is that he not be greedy for money. It's very important we see this as a qualification for a church elder. A church elder cannot be someone who is greedy for money. If we go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, it says, It is a trustworthy saying, 
If anyone aspires to the office of an overseer, he desires a good work. An overseer then must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, sensible, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not addicted to wine or pugnacious, but considerate, peaceable, free from the love of money. You can see here quite clearly that it is a qualification of a church pastor that he be free from the love of money. When you see somebody who is a pastor living it up, living in a nice big two-story house with an indoor swimming pool near the beach, living in that way, uh, that kind of person is not qualified to be a pastor. They are unqualified. Look at Joyce Meyer, unqualified. Stephen Furtick, unqualified. T.D. Jakes, unqualified. All of these multimillionaire preachers, they're all unqualified because their lifestyles show that they are greedy for money. The next passage I want to look at and this is really a passage, one of the most popular passages that people use to try to argue that pastors should be given a wage. And, and I will show you that I, I kind of agree pastors should be given a wage. Uh, but I want to show you what it says in its context and, and get you to kind of understand from the language of the passage how much a pastor approximately should be getting. So if we go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, a couple of chapters um, past what we just read, verse 17, it says, the elders who lead well, notice that, the elders who lead well, somebody who gives motivational pep talks every week, that's not somebody who leads well, okay? Somebody who gives, you know, these motivational feel-good messages, that's not a pastor who leads well. A pastor who leads well is somebody who preaches exegetically and teaches the deep things in the Word of God. And a pastor who leads well is also somebody that deals with sin in the church, a pastor that just lets everybody just live however they want, they don't do church discipline, they don't deal with sin, they don't speak against sin strongly in the church and remove people from the congregation who are living in sin, that kind of pastor is not ruling well. And so this passage automatically uh, it doesn't apply to them and it eliminates most pastors in the church world today. That's the first point. The elders who lead well are to be considered worthy of double honor especially those who labor at preaching the word and teaching. Now, when it says double honor here, it's not saying that they should get twice as much as everybody else. But what it's saying is that they should get the respect that they deserve as elders of the church, as well as the financial support, which we'll see in a moment. And verse 18, the next verse, gives us a bit of an idea what kind of support they should get for their job. It says in verse 18, the next verse, for the scripture says, you shall not muzzle the ox while it is threshing and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Now let me unpack this a little bit for you. Paul is quoting two passages of scripture, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. Now the Old Testament passage is quite straightforward. The ancient Israelites were not permitted to muzzle their ox while they treaded out the grain. They were to allow the oxen to eat the grain as they worked. And in the same way, the Apostle Paul is saying that pastors should be allowed to eat as they tread out the grain, as they work in the church. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. They are to have their needs provided for. The next passage, it says, the laborer is worthy of his wages. That is a quote from one of the Gospels, the Gospel of Luke where Jesus tells his disciples to go and preach the gospel from city to city and to find a home that is worthy and stay there and to eat the food that is provided there for them. And Jesus says, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. So when we look at this passage, we're not talking about getting extravagant wages where you can you know, travel around the world on private jets and, and live it up and have holiday homes and get million dollar royalties and things like that. We're talking about a pastor having his needs met. Christians and the church, the local churches are to meet the needs of their pastors. Sometimes a pastor can be bivocational and they don't need a full-time wage. I think that's a great idea. I think that should be the ideal situation. But many churches want a full-time pastor and that's fine, but they are to have the needs of the pastor met. They are not to receive an extravagant wage that goes beyond the ordinary members of their churches. They are to have their needs met. Very, very simple, I think. And Paul goes on in chapter 6, and remember there are no chapter divisions here. He goes on in chapter 6, verse 8, on the same page in my Bible. He says this, he says, And if we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. 
But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evils and some by aspiring to it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, O man of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance and gentleness. So how much should a pastor be paid? Enough to meet his needs within that local area. Whatever the living cost of that area is, should be how much he gets as his wage. He's to get money for his mortgage or rent. He's to get money to feed himself and his family and to clothe himself and his family. He's to get money enough to support his needs. People don't enter the ministry as a career. Entering the ministry is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's not a career opportunity. You don't enter the ministry to get rich, right? You don't enter the ministry to become a successful businessman or a successful uh, to have a successful career. You enter the ministry to be a servant to God's people. That's why you enter the ministry. And a pastor should be paid enough to meet his needs. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell notification button. I'll see you in the comment section and you'll see me in my next video.